If we're going to talk about quartz textures in porphyry style mineralization systems, we have to take a look at the ABD naming system that's commonly used to categorize vein types in those systems. The letter naming system was coined by Gustafsson and Hunt in 1975 to codify vein types at the El Salvador porphyry copper deposit in Chile. Their system was primarily designed to record the relative timing of the vein types based on cross-cutting relationships, and hence to draw some conclusions about the evolution of the hydrothermal fluid system. But they also included some mineralogy and textural characteristics so that isolated veins could be assigned to one of the categories. The original definitions are described in this table from the Gustafsson and Hunt paper. In summary, A-type veins are irregular, wispy stockworks filled with saccharoidal quartz, anhydrite and perthetic feldspar. Chalcopyrite and bornite occurred disseminated through the quartz. Veins merge into wall rock with indistinct boundaries. They have thin, weak halos of K feldspar or albitic alteration. Fluid inclusions are abundant with saline and vapour-rich populations. Timing is early relative to other veins and to ore. B-type veins are more planar stockworks, filled with quartz, anhydrite, molybdenite and chalcopyrite. Centerline seams are common. Mineralogy and texture are commonly banded parallel to the walls of the vein. The quartz is granular and approaches fine comb texture. Fluid inclusions are similar to A veins, but less abundant and include some low salinity types. Lack of alteration halos was a key characteristic of B-type veins in the original definition by Gustafsson and Hunt, unless the vein structure had been reactivated by later hydrothermal events. However, faint halos of feldspar alteration have since been recognised in studies of other systems. D-type veins are typically thin planar veinlets, filled mostly with pyrite, chalcopyrite, sphalerite and galena. Quartz has crystalline textures, including fine comb, and sulphides occur interstitial to that quartz. Fluid inclusions are less abundant and are dominated by low salinity liquid phases. The veins typically have distinct halos of philic alteration that extend two to five times the width of the vein. The lettered vein naming system became very popular because similar vein types with similar timing relationships could be found in almost every porphyry style mineralization system. But classification by mineralogy and textures alone became problematic when it was applied to systems with different chemistry. The El Salvador porphyry was dominated by copper molybdenum mineralization. Systems dominated by copper gold Molybdenum only and gold only mineralization have quite different sulfide assemblages. Many also include oxides, particularly magnetite and hematite, in the early vein stages. This resulted in expansion of the lettering system by later workers. The M type was introduced to describe veins that consist almost entirely of fine granular quartz and magnetite. Their timing is typically somewhere between A and B type veins, although they appear before A veins in this figure from Silito 2000. G type veins are similar to M type, except that they're hosted in wall rock lithologies outside the porphyry intrusives. C type has sometimes been applied to veinlets of almost pure chalcopyrite that come in somewhere between B and D in the paragenetic sequence and commonly reuse fractures in B-type veins. EB, for early biotite, refers to thin, wispy veinlets filled almost exclusively with biotite. EDM, for early dark mica, refers to early fractures with alteration halos of dark-coloured micas, mostly biotite. The fractures typically have little or no infill. The biotite is often partially or completely replaced by chlorite during subsequent hydrothermal events. QAM, or quartz and hydrite molybdenite veins, are similar to B veins except that molybdenite is the dominant sulphide instead of chalcopyrite. While the alphabet soup of names can be pretty confusing, you can see that there's a general progression of quartz textures from compact and hedral forms to larger, more crystalline forms with more interstitial space reflecting declining temperature and more brittle fracture behaviour in the system. 
The switch from granular to comb textures also coincides with a change from lithostatic to hydrostatic pressure conditions in many systems. There's a parallel trend in other vein minerals, with oxides, anhydrite and silicates, followed by molybdenite, bornite, chalcopyrite, pyrite, sphalerite, galena and finally carbonates, reflecting declining temperature and salinity in the fluids. Notice that quartz is the dominant mineral in the A and B type veins that represent fluids in the range of about 600 to 450 degrees C. The quartz goes missing during the deposition of C and early D type veins that represent the peak ore stage in most porphyry systems, with fluids between about 450 and 350 degrees C. That's because silica solubility goes back up as temperature declines through that window. Quartz returns as silica solubility begins to fall again with temperature below about 350 degrees C, so it becomes the dominant mineral again in the later, more peripheral D-type veins. Boundaries between the vein classes are really quite arbitrary, so there'll always be transitional examples that are difficult to assign to one particular category. Each porphyry system has slightly different geology, chemistry and physical conditions, so each one will have a unique subset of vein types and textures. Even within a single system, each intrusive phase commonly has a slightly different set of veins and textures. The Encuentro Porphyry deposit in northern Chile is one of the best documented examples of that. There's a great descriptive paper by Jaime Osorio, John Dillis and Santiago Collao that describes at least 10 distinct vein types associated with five intrusive phases in that system. So the letter vein classification system has expanded quite a bit since its original definition by Gustafsson and Hunt in 1975 to account for the natural variability in geological systems. And you won't find every type of vein in every deposit, but it's still a useful frame of reference when you do find yourself working inside a porphyry system and you're trying to figure out which sets of veins are most likely to be mineralized. From the point of view of quartz textures, the granular laminar textures, parallel walls, center lines, and multiple cross-cutting generations that characterize B veins are quite unique to porphyry systems. So that's a really useful flag to let you know that you're inside one of those systems and hence what else you should be looking for.